Most of you Husker fans know by now that Trev Alberts is out, already hired by Texas A&M, and things just don't exactly make sense. This is a guy that by all accounts had his dream job. He made his name playing in Lincoln, made his way back, has his name on the stadium. And it probably seems weird to you because he's really been thriving. Baseball's winning. Football seems to be turned around. It seems like Matt Rule was a great choice. For the first time, the Huskers football program has the number one prospect coming out of high school to play quarterback. Women's volleyball is killing it. Wrestling is winning. The basketball team has turned things around. So why now? Would this man up and leave like a thief in the night? Welcome back to Big Red Ran, everyone, where we are admittedly pretty bad at coming up with video ideas, so we've taken a little bit of a break. But this story was not hard to get lost in. And Gary has a theory or two as to what really went down, and it starts with the Board of Regents. I'm definitely not the first or the only person to look back to the Board of Regents, but, you know, people have their opinions and their thoughts on things, and some other channels have, have presented some different what-ifs or maybe type scenarios, but to me, when you look over the course of the last, I don't know, let's just say six years because they... Every person on the Board of Regents gets that job for six years and then they're up for re-election. So, you know, just let's take six years as a as a good kind of litmus test. And look and see how many coaches, ADs, chancellors, and presidents have been hired, fired, resigned, whatever. Like, just the turnover, right? And you and I have talked a lot about this throughout the day and, and texted and things back and forth. There's a lot of different things laid out as potentials as to why Trev Alberts has, has decided to take this job. The more, not to be offensive, but like shallow thinking is money, like A&M's money. It's for sure. It's, it's more than Nebraska's. I feel like it's not that much. It's not impactful enough for a guy to go from, you know, working at ESPN to putting his name out for a lot of these different high-end jobs, whether it be through conference, you know, officials to all these different things to eventually being the AD at UNO and then at UNO. And we could do a whole nother video on his stint at UNO and how it ties back to UNO and things like that. But for now, like, I'm kind of just checking things off the list of what don't make sense to me, right? So you you have a guy who, if anybody questioned whether or not he really wanted the UNL job, I would look at why you take the UNO job, unless you're kind of trying to set yourself up to be catapulted to the next level, which, you know, other other channels and streams and whatnot have alluded to the fact that he's a, he doesn't sit still too long. You know, he's constantly looking for the next thing or whatever. So with that in mind, he he gets back to Nebraska where he made a name for himself, where why he's the person he is and why his name registers with people the way it does is because of what he did on the field at Nebraska. So he comes back to Nebraska, pretty emotion filled press conference when he announces, you know, takes the job and, and gives basically his exception speech for the job. A short two year stint in most fans would agree. And I acknowledge that it's at different levels that the football program is is turning a certain direction in the right direction some people i feel like are over the top in both directions whether we're going to be in the college football playoff soon or yeah they're a little bit better but they still didn't make a bowl game i feel like it's in between there but there's a lot of people not only on each one of those spectrums but in the middle right but but i don't feel like there's a lot of people thinking that this was the wrong hire and the football prep programs continuing to downslide or, or vert backwards the two basketball teams women's and men's basketball team are both going to be in the tournament for the first time in i don't know how long the wrestling team you alluded to all, to the success of the different programs that's one thing another thing is all these projects right Con continuing finishing out whatever the big red project the the stadium upgrade project that's supposed to be coming on soon. Multiple things, all the things that you would look for in an AD. Can they fundraise? Can they get money for the sports programs to advance them? Can they put the right pieces in the right places? There's coaches on the staff now he didn't hire, but there are things like Hoiberg, for example, where he had an impact. He could have got rid of Hoiberg and brought in his guy, right? He kind of did the same thing he did with Frost with him, Hoiberg, panned out and frost didn't but when you look at what a person in that position take out the alma mater take out the dream job take out all those things when you look at how things were were looking and, and projecting to go for him 
It doesn't make sense for him to leave. Then you add in those things I just said not to pay attention to, more incentive why he would want to stay and not leave. And then you factor in, I don't know who in the nation would think that the AD at A&M is a better situation now. I'm not saying in recent history, I'm saying right now, being the AD at Nebraska on the outside looking in seems like a way better job than the AD at Texas A&M. I mean, they're paying whatever they're paying to Jimbo Fisher to not coach there. Now they're paying a buyout to Nebraska to have Trev Alberts and they're paying Trev Alberts and they're paying homeboy they got from Duke to be their head coach. The football program has regressed since they, the number one recruiting class a few years ago, pulling pretty much who they want, all this money to give to coaches and they're not getting any better. You know, you would argue they're getting worse. Like why would a guy leave this job is that guy, you know, why would that guy with those ties in the situation he's in with what's been going on the last two years, leave that job to go to that job? You know what I mean? Like to me, it just doesn't make sense that it's any of the, the money situation, the lawsuit, the fact that the president, you know, not the lack of hiring a president, I think there's a deeper look into the president aspect, but I mean, a lot of these other things you're hearing pop up just kind of on the surface is like quick reactions as to what well, it must be this, or it must be that it just doesn't make sense to me, man. In to, to what you asked or alluded to in the board of regents deal, a lot of people are saying that, but I feel like it, it goes deep when you start looking into why is the board of regents a problem? And that's a whole big can of worms. People are going to have different opinions and things like that on it. But when, when you have a board that has that much control over that big of situations, that big of hires, one, it clearly hasn't been working over however many, the last however many years, when you look at the changeover in all these different positions. But when Matt Rule got hired, he stood there with Ronnie Green, Trev Alberts, and Ted Carter with him. And he gave his thanks to Ronnie Green and all that stuff, who was a chancellor at the time. But he said, none of this would be possible without Ted Carter. He alluded to him first and went on a big deal because he has a history with him and Trev Alberts. And again, I'm not the first person to say this either. He's the only one left out of all, out of those four. But it's like, why? Like, why is it that when things seem to be working and fitting, there's a changeover at AD, there's a changeover at president, changeover at chancellor, there's a changeover at head coaches. And, and it's, I feel like people look at simple math, right? Football team's bad, hire a new football coach. Coaching hires haven't worked out well, get a better AD. AD's not working out, get a better, and you keep going. But I feel like today, yesterday, whatever, and in you know the next week or two, people are really gonna start understanding a little bit more about how what the tippy top is and how it works because you're kind of forced to at this point, right? Like I'll, I'll admit, I don't know much about how the board of regents worked, who did what, how long they were there, that they were elected, they weren't hired by the university. I didn't know any of that stuff, but I was honestly shocked to the point of like, dude, there has to be something big to where like, I was worried there was going to be like this big potential death penalty type thing coming at the, at the university, because it's like, what else? Like something catastrophic had to happen for this dude in this situation, the success he's having and the trajectory things are going both in the sports and with the facilities and the, the money and the donors and things like that for him to just be like, nope, I'm out. And when you look into it and you realize these people on the board of regents are elected by districts, and then they have to come together and make these decisions to me. And I could be a thousand percent wrong. We could find out in the upcoming days or weeks that I'm just way off my rocker and wearing a tinfoil hat here, but you have people that are elected put on a board to come together and make decisions. And if you and I decided we're going to make a decision together, a lot of our values and perspectives and things align and we would have disagreements. I would think this, you would think that, and we try to convince each other of the other thing. But you're getting people that are voted in from the Omaha area, the Lincoln area, which is voters putting you in that are drastically different than voters throughout the rest of the state, right? So not saying one's good. I'm not saying one's bad. I'm not saying they should all be whatever. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're adding another divisive issue when you put these people together and there's not two of them like there would be if you and I were making the decision, there's 12 of them. So you've got these 12 people, which excuse me for not believing them, mm -hmm. but they are all listed as quote unquote nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. So that seems fake. I don't believe that there are eight people in the entire country that are completely nonpartisan in 2024. To me, nonpartisan 
means you just you're above it. You you don't have any. You don't care. You don't care who wins the presidential election. You don't care who's in charge anywhere. I don't I don't believe that. I don't believe they're nonpartisan. I think they they're hiding behind that. And you're expecting 12 people from vastly different backgrounds with different morals, different standards, not saying as well that either are right or either are wrong, but they're different, trying to make the same hiring decision. And it's gumming up the works to the degree that things couldn't get done. And it seems like that's why he left. 100%. Like, that's, that's my thought. So to me, when you talk about politics, you have... The politics you kind of alluded to with the nonpartisan, the left, the right, the blue, the red, whatever, those things, which is real. And you have the politics that happens at every one of our jobs, right? Or even our households, right? It's it's not associated to Washington type politics, but it's like, well, if I get this, you should get this. If you're getting this, I should get this. Or like those types of things are politics as well, right? And you have the, we should do this because of this. To me, that's also like when you talk about politics in the workplace or whatever, I don't imagine people sitting around talking Republican, Democrat. I'm talking about like the higher ups hiring other positions, right? So you're going to have that regardless. You and I, if we were to hire somebody else to be on this channel with us, there would be politics involved with the way I would try to present my idea who I'm bringing in the way you would present your idea to bring in. And again, like I said, you and I line up on most things. But we still have different personalities, different opinions. You have 12 people that could be drastically different. And then you have those finer disagreements or different views or perspectives. I wouldn't even be bringing this up if we have not been without a president from the end of last August. We're going on a year with an interim president. Trev Alberts alluded to it in an interview he did last week. He alluded to it, in my opinion, by him right away when he announced he was going to A&M, bringing up their president, their leadership, specifying things. And other people have brought this up, but to me, you can just go a little deeper and realize that, go back to actual real politics. On election night, when they show the map of the country, but when they zoom in on Nebraska and they show Nebraska as an area, the whole goddamn state's red. And you've got two blips where Omaha and Lincoln are at. All these people that are voting that different and keep in mind, that's where the population, that's where the bulk of the population in the state is, right? Is are those two blue blips, the rest of it's red. The, that same map is voting for people to be in position to make one decision on one hire for one position. Again, I'm not saying one's right, one's wrong. Oregon has a board of regions. I guarantee they vote different than Nebraska does. Alabama has a board of regions. Guarantee you they're more in sync and vote different even more so than Nebraska does. I'm not saying one's right or wrong. I'm saying you have, in my opinion, you have more divisiveness on this board of regions that you're, you're naturally going to have divisiveness when a group of people have to make one decision, have to agree on one thing. And you have very different people and very different lives, perspectives, views, morals, whatever, that are already coming to the table super opposite and have to make a decision on something. And in my opinion, with zero facts, I want to make sure I state that very clearly. I have no way of knowing. My thought and the first thing that came to my head when I heard he was leaving is this is why we've been so long without a president. This is why we've gone so many years with changing presidents, changing chancellors, changing ADs, because naturally, let's say you and I agree drastically on who the third person we're going to bring to this channel is, and you get your way. Human nature, I'm going to look at everything that person does that I don't 100% agree with and go, this is why we shouldn't have hired him. This this right, this right here. And then he does a second or third thing. We might have to look at getting rid of this dude. Fourth, fifth thing. Gabe made a horrible decision. I told him from the gate it was wrong. And the more things go, I'm going to take them out of perspective, whether I mean to or not to prove that I was right and you were wrong, even if that's not my goal off top, right? It's human nature and vice versa. You would do the same thing. You're going to take little things that they do that you think are good that I don't even recognize. And you're going to hype them up and say they did better than this. And at some point we're going to come to a head in a couple of years or whatever else that, okay, let's just start over. We both still have the same amount of weight in this. We both carry the same amount of weight. So it's not like just because we're going away from your guy that you won on means that we're going with a guy that only I get to pick. You still get to pick. And then now maybe something goes my way and now we flip flop. Like you've seen it a thousand times, but I'm saying you, you have a group of people that you're going through this with 
And if I'm wrong, fine, I'm cool with being wrong, but I want to, I'm just, why else? What, what What is the other, like how much deeper than the Board of Regents would it go to determine why we keep having this turnover with presidents, chancellors, ADs, and essentially coaches because of all that? Th this really concerns me, not from an AD perspective. I don't think ADs have as much impact as a lot of people think. I think Trev was doing a good job. I would have loved to see him, seen him stay. But when you're coach that you, I think, I think it's safe to speak for you. You and I both think is the right guy. Neither one of us, to be fair, neither one of us wanted him at the beginning of the job search, but both of us agree and think that he's the right guy. When he stands there, and then even after he's had the job for a while, continues to go back and, and point out the leadership being a big part of the reason, the main reason why he came here. And now all of those guys are gone. Like how much longer is he going to be here? How, how confident should we be he's going to be here long term now? Or do we wait to see who they finally do hire as a president and then an AD? Does it go back to the AD answers to the chancellor? Does it stay with the president? I think Trev saw the writing on the wall that this is why the turnovers happen. This is why I still don't have a boss that I can take my Memorial Stadium modernization project to and get everything lined up so we can go to the Board of Regents and, and try to put this thing in motion and keep on the same timeline we wanted. They can't agree to get me a boss so I can do my job. They've gone through many of, of my boss's position before and since I've been here. They've gone through many of my position. I don't answer to the chancellor anymore, but they've gone through a handful, a, you know, a couple, a few of those. This is not going to work out. And if that's the case, if you took a dude who, I don't know that I agree it's his dream job. I've always kind of viewed Trev as a going as high as he could possibly go. And I don't think the AD at Nebraska is the highest you could go. But when you factor in that it's his alma mater, that everything was going his way, his projects were going like, that's legacy shit, right? So like, if he were to go away forever in 10 years, but he continued out for the next two, the projects and things he had going and he was able to turn this around, that never goes away. Everybody will always think of Trev Alberts when they have a new design stadium that they're in, when they see what the football program did, if say Matt Rule were to stick around, things were to work, right? So like he was kind of doing legacy type things that could outlive him essentially. And just literally overnight, like if we were having this conversation last night, you think I was batshit crazy. And now here we are, he's gone. Like something big has to happen or something big has to have been in the works of happening where finally there was a last straw scenario where he was like, now, if I can go to this school that has more money than you, I'm going to have to jump through less hoops to do the things I want to do. And they have good stability at the leadership roles above me. And I don't feel like that's going to change a lot. Therefore, my position is going to be in jeopardy a lot. I'll just take this. I'll take this because the stability that I can have here in the next three to five years and showcase what I can do will take me to the next level if that's what his goal was all along. And that's just kind of where I'm at with it, man. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of what ifs and maybe it was this, maybe it was that. And maybe those things, any, any one or multiple of those things are true. But to me, before Trev got here, there was kind of groundwork laid that there's just not a whole lot of unity and cohesiveness at the upper top tier level when it comes to the highest leadership roles at the university. So I, I think in my, you know, dumbed down, whatever you want to call it, way of piecing things together, I think it finally trickled down enough that a guy in the position to see, oh, this is why shit hasn't worked out. I'm not far from going. I'm right now in limbo because I don't have a boss and I haven't for, you know, eight, nine months decided they can't get their shit together. It's a, it's a bigger problem than I can fix. And he bounced out. So yeah, they haven't been able to get him a boss that can approve the things that he wants to push forward because they have such different values that some of the regents say, hey, this is what we're looking for. And the other regents are saying, yeah, no, we want this. This is what's important to us. Mm -hmm. And like you said, he saw behind the curtain and is like, this is never going to work with this many regents making these decisions. Tell us what you guys think in the comments. And also in the comments, let us know any video ideas you guys would like us to tackle. Until next time, go Big Red.